All right, Keith VD, how's it going? I'm doing all right. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good, man. You know, just grinding. That's right. That's right. That's what's up, man. So, uh, you know, everybody knows who you are, man. You know, everything that's, uh, you know, been going on. And um, so we're just going to get right into it. Um, let's just take it all the way back. Uh, when did you move to Compton? Moved to Compton, 1965. Okay, what was it like yeah. during that time? It was all uh, literally white, all white. And it started changing like 68, 69. Started turning into the black community. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, you live with both your parents? Yeah, both of my parents. I was raised by both of my parents. Mostly our whole community was raised by both our parents. You know, a lot of people stereotype, say uh, single moms, but that shit ain't true. Back in the early 60s and 70s, uh, black families was more together, they had both of their parents and everything. It was more of a peaceful neighborhood at that time. Yes, yeah. So it was low, lower crime, and then what did when did you see everything start? Do you seen everything? You said uh, sixty eight. Everything started to change. Uh, more blacks was coming in sixty eight, sixty nine, seventy. The blacks started coming in more. Yeah, and uh, crime rate went up like like in nineteen seventy two. It started going up, stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. And uh, like Alondra, Compton Boulevard, Rosecrans. They used to have uh, everybody used to take that them streets to go home. Once the crime rate went up, shit, uh, people started jacking them people on the laundry. So they they built the ninety one freeway from like seventy three, so to get get all the people up out of there quicker. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Did you have any brothers and sisters? Yeah, I had uh, I got five brothers and six sisters. How old were you when you started to get involved in the streets? About. 12, 12 to 13 years old. Yeah. Okay. 12 to 13. Okay, so um, your hood started around 1971? Yeah, 71. And it was called the Us Boys? Uh, Us Boys started before 71. Us okay. Boys started like 69, 70. Then uh, they turned into uh, Southside about 71, half of 71, 72. In between 71 and 72. I don't remember that far back. Okay, and what what uh what made the change? How come you guys changed? Uh, I don't know. You got to ask my older homies, man. Oh, I was okay. a kid, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, you know. But I got in about when I was like twelve. I mean, like seventh grade, eighth grade. Got in. Yeah. You got jumped in? No, 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 no. My family big, man. Also, we like we like started Southside. Or, you know, our street started Southside, really. Oh, Bird, okay. Bird's Lane, yeah, they call it, it's called Bird's Lane. It really started Southside. Oh, your brothers were from, oh, so your, your, your whole family was, a lot of your family was from there? No, just uh, my three older brothers. Oh, okay. And uh, my, all my homeboys that was on my street, like Dennis Johnson, he played for the Boston Celtics, all his brothers. He had like 17 brothers, and he lived on our street too. Dennis Johnson, a redhead kid, played for the Boston Celtics oh, back man. in the days with Larry Bird now. Yeah. Oh, no shit. Yeah, he's from my street. Oh, okay. And we had a, yeah. And you were playing football? Yeah, I played, I played football from uh, like 1971 to, uh, till I got into high school, into high school. Oh, yeah. okay. So that's where you first met Suge? Yeah, I met Suge and uh, when I was on the Midgets, he played on the midgets with me. His dad, dad and him and his uncles were our coach, football coach and stuff. He was the center. And I played running back and stuff. His cousins, uh, Ronald Donald, one of them played quarterback and the other one played tight end. Yeah. Oh, okay. You used to go hang at their house and everything? Oh, you know, after the games, you know, we went to games, they'd go, we'd go over there and have hot dogs, chips, you know, back in the days. Right. Hot dog chips and a little fruit punch thing. Where you throw the little ice cream in the fruit punch. That's yeah. a black thing back in the days. Yeah, we used to do that, go swimming at the house after, after we win and shit. Yeah. What was going on at, at 12 years old that made you want to be a part of a gang? No, it was just like a, our, our, our neighborhood is like a family, man. So, you know, there ain't no way around it, dude. So it was like you just grew up and that yeah. was just like what you've seen? Yeah, it's all found. 
Okay. Yeah. And what was going on around that time? Was there a lot of fights? Was there still shootings? No, it was mostly fights and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, what time did the shooting start? About uh maybe like 78, 79. Started really going, getting bad. Okay. Yeah. Is there any particular situation that stands out that you go, okay, that's when that's when things really started to, to get there? The click? Uh, not really. It was just, you know, it was get, it was money getting over there. We was getting money and uh, shit. You know, that's just part of our community, you know? Yeah. But everybody wasn't just getting in the game, you know? You had to be somebody, you know? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. How did you get into the dope game? Oh, uh, shit. Uh, this is a baseball coach at Compton College. I was a I was a uh, ball boy back there, bad boy and shit. And when uh, when I got older, he was buying a little weed. So one day I went up there. He asked me to buy some weed. I went up there, uh, sell him some weed. He like, man. He pulled out his little dresser drawer. Shit, he had like eight ounces. And that shit was costing like thirty five hundred dollars an ounce. Like, damn. He got on. I'm balling. That's the way I felt, you know. And then it started rolling from there, you know. And then you started getting into coke and everything else yes, later. Yes, selling. No, I was selling. Uh, I was selling coke then. Once, once uh, he gave me the, he fronted me eight ounces. Shit, I got back home with that shit, and all the big homies that ate me up. I mean, uh, you know, each one, everybody wanted to buy an ounce from me. So shit, I was like ready the next day. He, Damn, you did that shit fast. And he got to, he got to teaching me the game, telling me uh, don't use that shit. And he, he even told me this shit, the cocaine is better than a nut. So I'm like, damn, you don't want, you don't want no, nothing better than a nut. You know, I'm like, damn, mm -hmm. homie. Yeah, that's real. Yeah. And he said, yeah. So you had, you opened up around 81, 82, you opened up some crack houses? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, had, I had like three crack houses back then, like 81, 82. You got any stories from those? No, uh, we just, uh, he, he was uh, messing with us back then too. And uh, we used to cook over his house, cook up the rocks. Is that how you met EZ? No, I, I know him before him. He had uh, his cousin was from our neighborhood named Horse, Big Horse. And uh, he was around then, was like a little kid. Okay, and so yeah. so you knew EZ from when you guys were, were kids? Young? Yeah, when we were younger. Okay. Yeah. So you guys were doing business together? Yeah, uh, he he really uh with my little brother. He was like the same age. He was messing around. He was doing anything together. And I was a little older than him, but we used to uh, go over there in his mom's kitchen and cook up the, cook up the crack. Once we uh, converted from Potter to crack, that's when we started cooking the shit up. But I preferred it to stay uh, Potter. Because you can get more money, you know what I'm saying? Selling a little quarter tees. You ain't met the wear, you just get the little quarter teaspoons and put them in snow seals. Then uh, Ready Rocks hit like about 82 in the city of Compton, yeah. Okay. What was Easy like during that time? Oh, he's a cool little dude and stuff. Uh, before I went to the pen, Easter was, uh, he started getting into that music stuff. So he was in the, uh, when I, when a few times I was over there cooking, eating there, making that racket. I'm like, man. He's like, oh, that shit sound. Man, that sound like some bullshit. I guess I was work, used to the nursery rhyme, you know, more rhyming, you know, like Sugar Hill, uh, Fat Boys, fucking uh, Houdini, them. They was doing mostly rhyming. And he was turning that stuff to the gangster rap. Then uh, I went to the pen and, like, 85, and uh, about 86, 87, this shit hit. It cruised down the street in my six row. I didn't even know that was easy. I had been listening to the cassette tape, you know what I'm saying? Listening to that, like, damn. So one of the homies came up there and said, man, uh, I'm like, man, what Eric Wright doing? He's like, man, you heard that song, cruising down the street? I said, man, that's easy. He called himself easy. I'm like, damn. He blew up. I'm like, fuck. Man, my nigga, yeah. And, uh, shit, I was proud of him when I got out of it. He was, he was on, you know? Shit yeah. like that, yeah, he was on like a motherfucker. One day he was uh, sitting in front of my house. I was in that same 6'4", 
playing that no Vaseline, like, damn, I didn't want to do my boy, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, damn, he like, damn, dog. Like, yeah. That's, he was a good kid, too, man. He was a good dude, man. And they didn't, uh, that, that, that Compton, they didn't give him no justice in that, uh, that shit, uh, straight out of Compton. That was oh, bullshit. Yeah. That was bullshit. How he was broke. Okay, and they, they didn't, uh, Shug didn't do no bullshit like that or nothing like that. We was, man, ate Shug ass up over there. You know what I'm saying?